Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahavaka Kodash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai, in whom I reverence. And honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that taught me this truth, and those of you that are in the Holy Spirit and that are striving to remain in the Holy Spirit, and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few the very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days right the making of many books there is no end and much study is weariness of the flesh seek out of the book of Yahweh 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 Shai okay because you still got our people that are seeking every other philosophy Lord willing, this is edifying. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. Okay. It says, And further by these, my son, be admonished. Admonish means to be warned. Of making many books, there is no end. Right? And I was someone, before I got into the scriptures, I was reading all these, all these different books. Right, you may have been reading upon. Well, I wasn't into Islam, but you may have been reading upon different books, different history. Which there's not a problem with reading the book and filtering that through the scripture, like history, geographics, and so forth. But you've got to remember, Esau puts his spin on things, so even these books they have a spirit attached to them, right? Just like how the Bible has a spirit attached to it, the Holy Spirit. Okay, and it says there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Okay. So now we're going to go to Acts 19. Okay, this is what we're supposed to be seeking out of. Acts 19 and 19. Nothing's wrong with reading books, but the main book you want to be reading is the scriptures. Okay. This is how we filter everything out through the scriptures. This is Acts 19. Okay. And 19. Listen. Many of them also which use curious arts. So these curious arts. Okay. Type in that word curious arts and see what pops up. Type it in. G 4021 Peri Ergas Peri Ergas Peri Ergas Peri Ergas It says Okay Of magical arts Okay Of magical arts Busy about folks The first superfluous Of magical arts Meddlesome So these were individuals That were meddling Okay With what Magical arts In other words Craft and you go to a bookstore today, they would have the book sections. You have the Bible in there, and you even have books on mysticism, spells, witchcraft. So, these books were concerning what? Curious arts, idols, basically. Mythology. Okay. And brought their books together and burned them. I want to type in this word books. It just says a book, a roll, or a scroll, a papyrus, right? And you can imagine them books, it says right here, it says Bibelos. And this is the real book, okay, the Bible, okay, the most authentic book on the earth. So they brought their books together and burned them. Why? Because these were individuals that were being what, converted to the faith that Paul was teaching. Before all men, and they counted the price of them. And found it 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot. That's a lot of books they had. So mightily, do, mightily grew the word of Yahabai Shemi Hashem and prevailed. Right? So, this word was what? Prevailing greatly. Okay? And there was much uproar. I'm not going to read all of it, but it was when you go further down, there was much uproar. Right? There was a huge, huge, huge uproar. Why? Because what the idols 
people aren't believing in them idols anymore and there's money to be made through idolism by deception because idolism is, is another form of deception right these false gods these false idols Okay, so back to the point. Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh Arashai. Okay, so now let's go to Isaiah 30. Let's go to Isaiah 30. And we're going to go straight to... Yes, yeah, start at 30. Woe to the rebellious children. Saith the Lord Yahweh Yahweh Shai, that taketh counsel. So yes, our people are taking a counsel, right? But not of me. But it's not of Yahweh Yahweh Shai. It's not of the scriptures. Okay. Our people take counsel in these other books, Egyptology, Book of the Dead, and that in itself, it's called the Book of the Dead. It's for the dead. It's for the spiritually dead. Okay, and uh, what's it, the 48 confessions of Ma'at and all that rubbish, that's all rubbish, that's all witchcraft, that's all sorcery, that's all left-handed spirits, right, but of me, that cover, with a covering, so they're not taking what, a covering of Yahweh Shai, this is but not of me, so all these philosophies, yes, they have a spirit attached to them, and a cover with a covering, so that covering what would it be? Another word for covering is a veil. So our people have a veil, but it's not of Yahweh Shai. So they have a veil of demons. You believe in Christianity, you call yourself a seven day Adventist, a Pentecostal, a Baptist. You're covering yourself with demons, right? Calling yourself black, you're covering yourself with demons, right? But not of my spirit that they may add sin to sin. So that's what our people are doing. They're continually adding sin unto sin because they don't want to take heed to what the words of the scriptures. Right? It's that walk down to go down into Egypt. And America is also known as spiritually Egypt. And have not asked at my mouth. Right? Just like when um, Hurricane Katrina happened. What were they saying? Where is FEMA? Right? And to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. So our people, they want to strengthen themselves in the ways of Pharaoh. And you can even put this twofold in the ways of what? Egyptology. A lot of our people are into Egyptology. Then when you actually go into the the, um, the roots of Egyptology and all that. What is it? It's paganism. Right? And have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. And they trust in the shadow of Egypt. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to trust in Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. And these words that are written in the scriptures. Alright. Oh, man. So now let's go to Proverbs. Because I used to, look, before I came into the truth, I used to watch Surah and Seti and all those and... Khalid Muhammad, but after some time, once you wake up to the truth, you stop delving into all, all of that. Once Yahweh wakes you up to this truth, you can't merge these things with the truth. Go to Proverbs 14 and 12. But it is a way which seemeth right unto a man. It seems right, right, unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways. Of death so you may seem yeah this philosophy it sounds good but no it's wrong and it only leads to death remember what the scripture says broad that's that's the broad that broad path that's just any any, any philosophy any walk of life the narrow path is the scriptures okay and the scriptures do say if any man cometh in some other way the thief let's go to the John 10 you got men, they didn't come into this the right way. Excuse me. Let's go to John 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door. So you have to enter him by the door, and the door is a passageway. Yahweh Shai, he is that door, and he is the doorkeeper. 
so you enter into the door it's not through chemic chemic science scientology that's not entering to, into the door it's not by no new age movement that's not entering in by the door okay so if anybody not entering not by the door into the sheepfold but climb up climb if up some other way so there's men that climb if up some other way and that's why the script says some have what crept in unaware the same as a thief and a robber they never put away them philosophies that they were taught how you in the truth five six ten ten years or whatever but you still believe in the rudiments of this world christianity you still believe in easter you still believe in christmas all right if you've been in the truth for a year at least you're supposed to say all right i'm not celebrating that no more but for two years five years and you're still you're still holding on to these rudiments and you might say, a man may say, well, um, oh, you know, I, I celebrate Christmas, but you know, my family, I've got children and they want the presents. So who do you, who do you fear? Do you fear your family or do you fear you have a shy? I'm celebrating nieces because, you know, the, the, you know, the children like, no, bro. That means you're compromising yourself with the world. You're merging yourself with this world. Because my family celebrate christmas but i don't partake in the spirit of it see there's a difference oh man but climb up some other way the same as a thief and a robber so there's a lot of thieves and robbers spiritually thieves and robbers that have climbed up climbed up some other way by somewhat different philosophy you can't merge that with the truth right you can't merge young pharaoh and do a video on young Pharaoh and try and merge up because it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And he's against the truth. He doesn't believe in the Bible, young Pharaoh. Right? But he that entered from by the door is the same of the shepherd of the sheep. So you enter in by your Habashai. That's how you will know the true shepherds of the sheep. Okay, we don't, I don't, I don't promote Garveyanism around here okay we're not into Garveyanism he was set up right he was set up right by the elites yes Garvey was set up by the elites that that back to Africa movement was set up by what the elites and yes he was a mason right excuse me and I believe what what did he I believe he went to what university in what UK Okay, and he had connections in what? London. Okay. Anyways, let's continue. Ah, oh, man. And he called his own sheep by name. Right? And he leadeth them out. Because that's a true shepherd. So he calls it his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Why? Because they notice, they recognize, and they're trustworthy. And that shepherd knows his sheep. Just like Kavashai knows his sheep. Right, and Yahushua has appointed other shepherds to look after that sheep. See, this lesson is going completely somewhere else now. <laughs> to him, the porter openeth. The porter is another word for porter is a janitor. Okay, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. They trust him, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, not 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 behind them, <laughs> before them. Okay, and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. So, the sheep, yes, they know Yahweh's voice, right? And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. So, if so anyone's teaching what they come into truth, but they're trying to merge Garveyanism, you know, yeah, we got Garvey. Well, what are you talking about? They're trying to merge anything or Christianity, they're trying to merge that with the truth. When the true sheep, the hopeful elect, were going to flee from him. They're going to, nah, that, that, that doesn't sound right. For they know not the voice of strangers, those that have crept in unaware, the false prophets. Okay. So now we went to that because I want to stay on topic. Ah, oh, man, I'm doing these lessons for the brothers and sisters so, you know, they can have a better, you know, sight of what's going on. So the key thing, okay, let's go to 
Matthew's 11 and 29 now. Okay. Let's go. This is Matthew's 11. And let's jump straight to 29. Okay. So you saw that 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Okay, that burden, that's that yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of Yahweh Shai. How, how can you do that? By what? Reading the scriptures. You can't learn of Yahweh Shai through the Kiba Nigaz, the Book of the Dead, the Quran. You can't learn of Yahweh Shai through those, none of those books. All right? And learn of me. So we've got to learn of Yahweh Shai more and more and more. For I am meek. Yahweh Shai was meek. Yahweh Shai was humble and lowly in heart, in mind. And you shall find rest in your souls. All right? For my yoke is easy. It says it. His yoke, this, this his yoke that is put upon us is easy. But it's easy if you're casting your burden upon you. Have a shy. And my burden is light. That weight. Sometimes it seems heavy. But that's when what? You're not thinking about your Habashah when you're not putting your Habashah. Because your Habashah says, cast your burdens upon me. Okay. Doesn't mean you're not going to have a burden, but you cast it upon your Habashah. And a burden represents the anxieties. Okay. Now, let's go to Isaiah 34 and 16. Always try to get the most out of these videos and try and make it as simple as, as possible for the brothers and sisters that are listening and learning. Let's go to Isaiah 34 and 16. It says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Seek means to inquire. So what do we inquire? Out of the book of the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, the Bible, the Holy Bible. And it hasn't been tampered with, like men try to say, oh, but who wrote that and this and that? It hasn't been tampered with. Okay. Yes, the Bible was translated from what the Hebrew, the Greek, and the Latin. Okay. To the English. Okay, because you've got people that are scattered in different parts. Right, so what did you have? William William Tyndale? Read upon William Tyndale as well. They tried to get rid of him. Right? And he was what wanted to authorize what more of the Bibles. Okay. Remember back then you had um during the Renaissance, you had the Bible destruction group during the Renaissance that were trying to destroy the Bible and twist it and turn it into something that it wasn't. Okay. But the Bible is authentic as it as it can be. This is the word of Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Okay, Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord Yahweh Yahweh Shai. This is what you seek out of. Not none of, none of these other books. The other books can be used in reference to the scriptures. If you're um, mating it with something. Okay. If there's some geographics because Antiochus, Epiphanes, Caesar... These people existed, so and they're in the scriptures. They're in the Apocrypha. Okay, Alexander the Greek. Right? They're all in the Apocrypha. So yes, you can link particular books you read upon them, you can link it with the scriptures. Okay. So it says, seek you out of the book of the Lord Yahweh Abashai and read. Key thing, read. Okay. None of these shall fail. Okay. None shall want her mate. In other words, you can't pattern it. With any other book and say, well, the Quran, uh, I believe the Quran's the book, the inspired book of, no, there's only one book and that's the scriptures. But what you have is individuals, they want to, uh, what's it? They want to, what's it, what's it, what's it? They want to gumbo. They want to gumbo of all this different knowledge and they want to show off, they want to show that they know the Bible, they know the Quran, they know Christianity. The truth ain't, this is, the truth ain't about that, right? Because that's actually spirits, that's a, a multitude of spirits that a man has on him. Is it good to know particular things about the different cultures, how they live? Yes. But the main thing is about the scriptures, because the scriptures teach you about all the cultures and all the what the 19 nations. Okay. None shall want to her mate from our mouth, it have commanded. 
and his spirit it have gathered them okay this is the book we're supposed to be seeking out the holy bible nothing else oh man okay nothing else so now i'm gonna go to proverbs No, no other book really deals with prophecy like the Bible does. The Quran don't deal with prophecy, right? The Quran is um, upholding what Muhammad, which I don't want to get into all that rubbish, right? The only book that deals with prophecy is the Holy Bible. There's a reason why. Why is it every hotel one would go to? If you've ever been to a hotel, there's a Bible within the hotel. Court systems, there's a Bible, even though, even though they don't stand to it. Every court system, a Bible. Right? Because it's the word of Yahweh by Shemi Abishai. Let's go to Proverbs 2 and 11. Okay. Oh, man. Let's start at Proverbs 2 and start at 10. When wisdom entereth into thy heart, and it's the wisdom of the scriptures, knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Discretion shall preserve thee. Discretion means to be discreet. Understanding shall keep thee. Right? That's what's going to keep the men safe. Understanding and discretion. Discretion is about what being discreet. Right? And this is one of the first things I learned in this truth as well. Being discreet. Scriptures be wise as serpent, harmless as doves. Okay, you've got a lot of psychopaths out here. Right? So the scriptures teach us how to be discreet in our goings every single day. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things, the forward things are what them falsehoods through what different philosophies. So even wisdom protects you from that. The false philosophies out here. Who leave the path of uprightness. So you have men that once heard about this truth, but they leave the path of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Right? Whether it's Christianity, whatever it may be. You rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked. So you have men, they delight in these different philosophies. Whose ways are crooked, perverse, that means to go aside. And they are forward in their paths. To deliver thee from the strange woman, these philosophies. Okay. Even from the strange which flattereth with her words. Because you may read some of these books. The book of Enoch. And it may sound good. But it's not. Right. Which forsake of the guide of a youth. Don't forsake the guide of a youth. What's the guide of a youth? The scriptures. And forget of the covenant of our power. For her house inclineth unto death and her paths unto the dead. That's why the scriptures, he that lead it, um, what's it, one without the ways of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. None that go unto her return again. Neither take hold of the path of life. It's very rare. Remember that individual in that Boston camp? Remember his name was Sankofa. And did you see the state of him once he left the truth? He went straight back to, to Kemetism, or whatever you call it, Kemet. He didn't believe in the scriptures anymore. That's, that's, a, that's a fearful thing. That's why we've got to fear Yahabashai, day in, day out. Right? You've had many that came in, and some went back to Christianity, some went back to the churches. Right? None that go off unto her return again. Neither take they hold of the path of life. Not to say it's impossible if you have a shy, because he can turn things around. He can have it where a man hears about this truth and goes back into the world. And nothing's impossible for you, how I have a shy. All sins can be forgiven except for the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Right? But it's rare that I haven't seen that happen yet. Someone that falls out, goes back and listens to another philosophy and comes back in. I haven't seen it yet. Okay? That thou mayest walk in the way of good men, those that have kept this faith and keep the paths of righteousness, and that's what we have to do, and that's what discretion what teaches us to do. Okay, so this this lesson, it was a little bit all over the place, but I hope this is edifying. And yes, seek ye out of the book of the Lord Yahweh Yahweh which is the Holy Scriptures. And until the next time, shalom.